Right, we're looking at a question called Abby. So in this question, the accountant of Abby is concerned about the disclosure of trading that occurred between Abby and the company that director of Abby is associated with. Director of Abby is associated with. That should tell you this is related party. The director is also attempting to influence how accountant should account for two issues associated with consolidated financial statement. Right, we have some creative accounting here, got it? Okay, uh, the following exhibits are available. Related party transaction, subsidiary fair value adjustment and goodwill impairment review. Okay, let's look at the first one. Um, let's look at the requirements here. The requirements here says discuss professional, discuss the ethical and accounting implication uh, of the director's suggestion. Now, as you know, this type of questions do not appear anymore. I just want to highlight to you this type of questions do not appear anymore. Whereby the exam questions nowadays tend to be like uh, explain the accounting treatment and then breaking it down to uh, another angle. So I just want to highlight to you the exam question tend to be more closer to this approach. Um, where is it first? I like Faham here. Okay. Discuss the accounting treatment which Faham should adopt to address each issue above and then discuss the article. So I think I will stick to this format of the answering strategy. I just want to highlight to you that the examiner does not do the format that you see here anymore. He's putting it into a single blown question like that and not breaking it up. He, he realized the mistake of doing that after he kind of uh, did it the first time. So here, what I'm going to do is put that idea inside here. Let's see here. I can copy these words out again. Copy. And then I'm going to put it here and paste it okay so here i'm just going to say same requirement only i am adjusting the requirements to match the more newer exam paper and not the older exam paper the specimen paper did not have that behavior so a would be discuss accounting to address uh, discuss the accounting treatment to address the issues Are you okay? This is the issues. Next, part B would be, I will repeat again, the exam question would be very similar to this. Part B would be So, I am modifying the way that question was designed, okay? And uh, I kind of break it down this way. Okay, let's go into the question now. Guys, are you clear why I'm breaking it down this way? Because this is how the examiner has been asking the question so far. So I would think of breaking it down to part A and part B. Okay, let's look at the first part related party transaction. Okay, um, nothing's appearing here. Let me see this part. Ah, something is appearing here. Good. Okay. Uh, let me see here again. Okay. Uh, let's say, if I get a question like this, there is a tendency for me to, especially the ethics question, I think it's nice to do this. Source data. Just uh, put that in, into your targeting box. I'd call this into a, like a target box for you. It's still using the source data approach, but more on the word side. We're now locking down some words as a reference point. So when you read this, I'm going to do the source data type analysis for this one. I'm going to use uh, Abby here. Okay, as opposed to the Abby there. Okay, because I think we're having a problem with the data here let me try that again no nah, it's not loading okay so never mind um, I think it'll be subsidy fair value goodwill impairment and uh, this should be the transaction related party okay right uh, Abby is a company that conducts business in several parts of the world okay fine related party transaction accountant has discovered FD of Abby has purchased goods from company art right okay FD purchase goods Okay, fine. All right. I don't need to write the whole thing. Okay, all right. Right. Um, the okay. FD 
of Abby has purchased goods from a company, right, which Rector jointly owns with his wife. Okay, jointly owns with his wife. Okay. Um, and the purchase should be disclosed. Obviously, it should be disclosed. However, the director refused to disclose the transaction as he's, uh, in the opinion, it's arm's length transaction. Right? It's an arm's length transaction. Oh. You need to still disclose it anyway. Um, he feels that if transaction is disclosed, it will be harmful for the business and feel the information asymmetry caused by such a non-disclosure is irrelevant as most entities undertake related parties without disclosing them. Uh, we call that rubbish. He's just trying to confuse you. This is, uh, this is called confusing you. Don't get panicked with this. Did you read this and get panicked, guys? Uh, when you read that, did you like, oh my god, this is very serious matter. Uh, I don't know what he's talking about. Did you go like that? You know he's talking rubbish, right? Uh, when people want to escape something, they start talking rubbish. They start throwing uh, jargon. They start writing things that's not relevant. That's normal. It's kind of a usual approach. Uh, if you have known people in the accounting line, I think... Um, no, there's nothing there. It's actually, he's, you don't need to use it. It's just an excuse. Uh, yeah, you can talk about the ethics part, but you know, he, he's, he feels the transaction disclosure. Similarly, the director felt that competitive harm would occur if the disclosure of operating segment of profit loss is made. Okay, competitive harm. So, he uses the third information asymmetry. Okay. Okay, yes, information asymmetry uh, can probably use that, but uh, be careful first. Okay, now, so now irrelevant as most part, most entities. Okay, most entities uh, do related party transactions. Okay, fine. And he also said that as uh, competitive harm. Okay. Now, as a result, entity only disclosed measure of total asset and total liability for reportable segment. Total asset and total liability for segment. Okay, that's wrong. Now, th this works for this chapter, this part, this question only. Only it works for this question, all right? The ethics question, uh, this idea of breaking down the source might be useful. When preparing the financial statement for recent year and the accountant noticed Adrai had not paid an invoice for several million and is significantly overdue for payment. Adrai... Uh, had not paid the invoice to sell million significantly owed you for payment. It appears that the entity has liquidity problems, unlikely that outright would pay. Accountant believes the loss allowance for trade uh, receivable is required. Finance directors refuse to make an allowance and has told accountant that the issue should not be discussed with anyone within the trade because possible repercussions of credit witnesses are right. Okay. Well, FDs argue no need uh, ECL. FD. Okay, now from the accounting point of view, let's look at the accounting treatment.
The FD is a Okay, that's something you should be aware of. Okay, that there is a disclosure requirement. Okay, that's the first part, related party transaction. Right, the next one is going to be
right? That's the operating segment part. Now we look at the Okay, done. That's a great loss. Okay, you kind of gave some points for each one. Got it? Let's move to the next part. I'm not talking about the ethics part. I can talk about the ethics part. I can talk about... Uh, Okay, um, I kind of talked about this issue, all right? Let's move on to the next part. Subsidy fair value. Okay, additionally, when completing consolidated financial director suggested there should be no positive fair value adjustment for recently acquired subsidy and uh, stated that the accountant's current position is dependent upon following this instruction. Fair value of a subsidy for is, is 50 million above carrying amount of the financial records. The reason given not for fair valuing the subsidy is that goodwill are arbitrary calculation which is meaningless and context. 
Now, it's nothing serious there in terms of uh, this one. Okay, so we we'll just put this here and say right. Okay, this is the next one. Okay. Let's look at the goodwill impairment. Finally, when preparing impairment tests, goodwill arising from other subsidies, the director suggested accountant be flexible in the assumptions used to calculate future expected cash flow so that no impairment of goodwill arises. He specifically suggested accountant to use discount rate which reflects risk for which future cash flows have been adjusted. He has indicated he will support a salary increase for the accountant. Okay, right, there's a few words here, but we'll just talk about the impairment. Right, we kind of finished up all the issues there. Okay, now we can talk about the ethical issues arising.
Right. Okay, that should be sufficient. I repeat again, that should be sufficient. Okay, any questions here guys? We're done with this part. Enough, huh? That should be enough for this question. Okay. Let's move on to another question. <coughs> 